Welcome back to our series of short videos looking at individual multiple choice questions, uh, thinking about the techniques of answering them, as well as doing a little bit of revision along the way of the key ideas. In this question, we're going to think about uh, policies to avoid a situation of deflation. So let's take a look at the question. And here it is. In March 2014, Sweden had a change in its consumer price index of minus 0.6%. Which combination of policies might the government use to restore price stability? And then we have four policy options. Again, it's combination of policies, there are two in each. And the aim is to restore price stability, in other words, to avoid deflation. If you're part of our series here, have a look at the answer, think about your answer, Press the pause button and I'll be back in a few seconds with the correct answer and the chain of reasoning. The correct answer to this question is D. Have you got it right? Let's think about the, the reasoning behind the, the answer. So deflation is defined as a sustained fall in the general price level. Sweden in March 2014 was experiencing deflation. So they're looking uh, in this question for you to pick out policies that will restore price stability. Of course, the way to do that is to increase the level of aggregate demand relative to the supply side capacity of the economy. We're looking, therefore, for, for expansionary policies. And indeed, uh, the best answer will be a combination of expansionary monetary and expansionary fiscal policy. Only option D contains two expansionary policies to cut interest rates and to increase government spending. Let's just work through the four options. A, well, increasing indirect tax would provide a short-term rise in price, but doesn't essentially restore price stability because both higher interest rates and higher VAT, for example, act as a deflationary force on demand. Higher indirect taxes, for example, uh, reduce people's real incomes. They therefore have less to spend on goods and services. B is wrong because both policies are deflationary in terms of demand and therefore worsen the deflationary situation. Again, C, both policies, cutting government spending and increasing income tax, which will lower people's disposable incomes, they're both deflationary. It's D. D is the right answer. Both policies, cutting interest rates, perhaps in, in the case of Sweden, negative interest rates, and increasing government spending, some kind of fiscal stimulus. Both of those policies seek to increase aggregate demand in the circular flow and help over time to increase the price level and eliminate the situation of deflation. So D is the right answer to this particular question.